Let's look now at how the government can intervene in the case of a positive or beneficial externality Again, this is government intervention in a case of market failure. Here it's a very different kind of market failure. In the case of a positive or beneficial externality, a benefit to third parties, the market failure in this case not because it produces nothing in the case of a public good, or because it produces something we don't produ want produced, like cocaine. Here the market fails because it produces some, but it produces less than the optimal allocatively efficient level of output. So we get some, but we want more. And why is that? We want more because for something like flu shots, something like flu shots, there's a demand curve based on the marginal private benefit of getting a flu shot. My willingness, how many flu shots, how many vaccinations am I going to get? Well, it depends on how much I think I'm going to benefit. The private benefit of getting flu shots or health care in general is what's going to determine the level of demand. There's some cost of producing health care, flu shots, and all other things being equal. the market will produce QM flu shots. That's how many consumers want to buy and producers want to sell at the same price. But in the case of a positive externality, there's a social benefit higher than the private benefit. The marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal private benefit because it's equal to the private benefit plus the external benefit. There's a private benefit of getting a flu shot. You don't get the flu. But there's a third party external third party's benefit when I go get a flu shot because those third parties are much less likely to catch the flu because I'm not going to infect them because I got vaccinated. The optimal level of output, allocatively efficient level of output from society's point of view, is up at O, where the social benefit, private plus external put together, gives you the social benefit, is equal to the cost of production, the marginal cost of production. So what we have here is a graph showing that there's an external benefit for any level of output. There's the private benefit and the social benefit, and the difference is the external benefit to third parties. Now look at QM and QO. QM is what we get from an unregulated market. QO is what we, as a society, want from the flu shot market. And therefore, there's an efficiency loss. It's allocatively inefficient to just settle for QM. The uh, amount of the inefficiency is shown here. For all these units between QM and QO, that unit, that unit, that unit, that unit, that unit, that vertical red line shows the difference between the marginal social benefit of producing it and the marginal cost of producing it. Well, if society benefited more than the cost, 
it should have been produced. All these units from QM to QO those are units that should from society's point of view should have been produced but weren't. And that's an efficiency loss, a welfare loss, a deadweight loss. And the size of the deadweight loss is seen right there. Why is there a deadweight loss? There's a deadweight loss because This is a Goldilocks problem. It's not all or nothing. It's not inefficient to produce flu shots. It's not like a public good. It's not that we won't get any from private firms. We'll get some. We'll just get too little. In the case of a negative externality, it's not that all paper production is evil and all pollution should be stopped today. It's because we get too much paper, more than the allocatively efficient amount of papers produced due to the negative externality. We get too little health care. Too few people get flu shots because of the beneficial externality, the positive externality those flu shots produce. So, once again, we have a policy problem for the government. How can the government internalize this externality? Get rid of that deadweight loss. Here's how. There's the private benefit of getting a flu shot. There's the cost of flu shots. The market produces it M, produces QM flu shots. But there's a higher marginal social benefit, the private benefit and the external benefit put together give you the social benefit. There's the amount of the external benefit, vertical distance between the two curves. So we wish we were at O. We've got a deadweight loss. It's that big. Well, the government can do two things. The government can push out the demand curve, so to speak, raise up the private demand with what you could call a Pigovian subsidy. a voucher or a rebate. The government could send something in the mail, say, go get a flu shot and we'll send you $10. Or, here, this voucher is good for a free flu shot. If they do that, then they'll increase the private demand, the private benefit, produce a new demand curve, And consumers will now demand more flu shots. And the new demand curve will cross the supply curve at M2. And the deadweight loss will disappear because now consumers will demand more flu shots and the intersection of the new demand curve and the supply curve will be at M2 at level QO. That's one way to do it. And the government might do that with flu shots, with solar panels for your roof. The government could say install solar panels and we will give you a rebate. But another thing the government could do is subsidize the 
producers, which in the case of flu shots might be easier. There are a lot of people who want flu shots, not so many hospitals giving them. The government could also subsidize the producers. So that's another way to internalize a positive externality. Let's see that. The government can make it make people get more flu shots, capture the positive externality by making it cheaper to give flu shots. What we saw a minute ago was they can make it cheaper to get a flu shot by giving the consumer a voucher. They can also make it cheaper to give a flu shot by subsidizing producers. The effect will be essentially <clears throat> from the point of view of output and allocative efficiency the effect will be the same. Here's where the market is originally producing at QM. But there's a greater I should point out in this case the demand curve shows only the marginal private benefit of flu shots but there's an external benefit as well just that big put them together you get the marginal social benefit and what the government could do well the government observes that we wish the market was producing at O producing QO flu shots. As we saw a minute ago, the government could manipulate the demand curve by encouraging consumers to buy more flu shots, but the government can also manipulate the supply curve by subsidizing the production of flu shots and instead of the supply curve S1, if marginal cost is lowered, The effect of the government subsidy would be to lower the cost of production and we'll get an intersection down here and firms will be willing to produce more flu shots. The supply curve is shifted out to the right and we will get rid of the old deadweight loss, the allocatively efficient level of output, QO, will be reached. So depending on the good, depending on the circumstances, it might be more convenient for the government to subsidize producers than consumers. But either way, the deadweight loss, the previously existing deadweight loss, is eliminated. And we have moved up. That was our deadweight loss. And we have moved production up from QM, what the market gave us, to QO, which is what we want. You can't always get what you want. But if you try sometime, you just might find you get what you need.